Okay, so I'm going to try to finish up this wax today if I can. And um, I'm just going to quickly go over what I did in the first part of the video. Um, now, please be aware that the first part of this uh, wax curving was done last week. And um, I had it, I live streamed it on my Facebook group, but wasn't able to download it. So I'll put the link to the first part of this to my Facebook so that you can see it. So what I did last week was I cut out the basic shape. Now, I didn't need to use such a thick piece for this particular um, piece of jewelry, but I was trying to demonstrate a few things like how to cut this um, and make it nice and parallel on both sides. But now what I'm going to do, and if I was going to do a mirror image of a low relief piece, so if I wanted one here and another one here, then I would cut this exactly in half and then I would have that mirror image. However, in this case, it's going to be roughly, you know, two millimeters thick, two and a half millimeters thick to start. So I'm just going to go around the outside and using my dividers. I'm just going to mark a little line all the way around on each of the pieces. And it's going to be my cut to line. You can see how much extra space that I have. Now, each time I cut one of these, however, I am going to have extra material. I'm going to make sure I cut a little wide of the line. I don't want to, I don't want to cut into my, my overall thickness. So you can see that line there. I don't want to cut into this side of it. I want to stay on the left side in this case, although I am turning around. So I'm going to want to stay on the right side of this wax. Um, so, I'm going to uh, try to get this most seeable. Again, I'm using a um, coping saw blade, not a spiral blade. It is very difficult to cut straight with a, co with a, um, a jeweler's skip tooth or spiral blade. They're good for hacking, but they're not good for cutting. So I'm just going to back my camera up a little bit here so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So there's my line and I'm going to put my saw blade right along the edge there and very carefully cut through that. Make sure that I'm parallel to the top and because these are so weak on the sides, I have to support everywhere that I'm putting any pressure. So I'm supporting this entire first one and I'm going to cut through that one. Now I'm supporting that one and the one next to it. Cutting through that one. Now you can see I've cut through all the way through the first one most of the way through the next one and so on and I have to I do have to support them as I go and quite frankly this is where my really big thumb helps is I can support the whole thing now I'm going to cut straight through the last one there we go so I've cut all the way through and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, supporting it as I go. Making sure that I'm cutting and giving myself a little bit of extra room. So I'm not cutting right on the line. In this case, I'm cutting just to the left of the line. And what this does essentially is it lets me cut through without having any of these break off. So now I've cut, you can see on the inside there, I've cut all the way through. I'm going to cut the final piece. And I'm, again, I'm holding on to this. as I go there.
there we go. So if I was doing a mirror image, I would cut another one off of the other side. The side's a little bit uneven. I could flatten that out and cut another one off of there. However, for now, I'm just going to work on this side. The first thing I want to do while it's still fairly thick is I want to, I want to flatten this side. And to do that, I'm going to use a very large file. You can see how this piece fits on the whole thing. It's not a very rough file. And I'm going to put my hands across the whole thing. And I'm just... You can see how it's starting to come down. I've still got some unevenness. And I want to check and make sure that it's parallel. So I can see that this side is a little bit higher. So I'm going to push my fingers down a little bit more over there. And I do still have to support the whole thing. If I wanted to, I could glue this to a piece of wood and go that way. But um, I don't feel like I need to. It's a very fine file, so it's not taking much off with each pass. And what I'm looking for is none of these little, I don't know if you can see that, the little grooves in there. I'm trying to avoid those, get those all cleaned out. That'll be my final thickness for this. And what I'll do eventually is when I have a number of waxes carved, I'll cast them. Um, the ones that are purchased, um, as I go, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll post videos of the finished pieces so that you can see them. And I'm just moving my hand over here so I can put a little bit more pressure on this side. Because I can see that this side here is a little bit thicker than this side. So I want to take the side down a little bit. So there's still one little spot there. A little bit of thickness difference. And I could get my calipers out to double check all of this. There we go, that's pretty good. It's one tiny little spot, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Now I can see that this piece here is a little crooked. Once it's cast, I'll fix that up and do a little bit more carving um, from there. So at this stage, I'm going to start uh, giving this a bit of form. And to do that, oop, to do that, I'm going to first find my flex shaft key because as always, those things do go missing. One of the few pleasures, and as I teach, sometimes my students leave them around, but this time it was, it was me. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a small rotary file like this guy here. And I'm just going to start roughing it in. So, oops, my goal with this piece, and I'll see if I can sort of show you on here. My goal is this piece here is going to have um, a little bit of a taper this way. So it's going to be round at the top like this. You can just see that little line there. And then it's going to thin out here. So it's thick here and thick here and thin here. And I'm going to uh, basically make this whole thing look like wire. So to do that, again, I'm going to, I'm going to support it. I'm going to use my flex shaft and you can see when I do this, I have to watch that this does not hit so that the chuck does not touch here, um, but I need enough room. So I'm going to start by just taking a little material off the middle. So I'm going to show you what I did there. So you can see how it's curved in And I'm going to do that to each of them. Again, I want to make sure that my flex shaft uh, does not touch the, uh, the wax. So make sure that the chuck key, the chuck, sorry, not the chuck key, um, does not touch uh, the wax because it can damage it. And then I'd have to do repair. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm just going to open this up a little bit 
and instead of having my burr all the way in, I'm going to give myself a little bit more playroom so that I can get in here. And I'm going to just leave it on my bench peg to support it. And so I'm watching back here and everywhere to make sure that this burr, this rotary file, doesn't unintentionally touch anything. So there we go. You can see how I've got that curve happening there. And I'm just going to do the rest of them now. So I'm actually holding with one hand and using the rotary file and I'm watching it I'm looking from the side here to make sure that it's the right shape and we'll do this one here You gotta be careful as I thin this out. I don't wanna. I don't wanna break it. So there we go. I've got all of these curved just slightly. Um, so each of these is curved down. You can see the edges are cut out there. Now I'm gonna curve these this direction. Again, I'll use the rotary file for this. I'm using my bench to give it some support. So that's the curve there that I'm giving it, right there. A little bit more on this side, I think. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. Now where I'm gonna have a problem is right here. Not much playroom. The same thing here. And then this one as well. One thing you just have to be careful of is that you don't overcarve and that you don't uh, accidentally rip something off. So I'm holding the back here with my one finger so that it supports and solidifies the whole piece and I'm watching the far side as I do this just like that and same thing here using my finger to hold it so when I'm doing this I'm actually I'm looking down this side okay you can see how that moves so I gotta make sure that I support it Now, it's very difficult to get in there with this any better than I have, so I'm going to go in now um, with a little bit finer tool. Um, and by finer, I mean just something that I can get in there a bit better. So I'm going to use a ball burr, and that'll let me... It was a bit big. I'm going to go a little bit smaller. That'll let me get in there, especially down here, and uh, bring that in just a bit here. I'm still just roughing it in at this stage. And I'm watching that I'm, I'm making a parallel line. So I want to try to make sure that this ends here. And so this has got to be carved down a little bit further here. Just like that. Can you see how my hands are resting on my my bench peg and that's to help me make sure I do a controlled cut here. This one's pretty good. 
There we go. And this one I'm going to actually do from the other side. There we go. Now, I'm going to go back and uh, go in with my graver. And I'm going to start rounding each of these edges. I'm going to do that freehand. So I'm going to start smooth it and I'm going to make sure uh, right here where these two pieces come together I can see that it's it was hard to get in here with the tool and it's not quite enough material removed so I'm going to use my graver to bring that edge down a bit and I'll do the same thing the other direction. Very difficult to get this to do this while the camera's on because normally I would be changing directions, but for me to let you see what I'm doing, I need to do a little bit at a time here. And I'll do the same thing here, where I'm just taking a little off. And again, I have to be very careful not to break that. This one's okay. I'll do the other side here. Just like that, a little bit here. I could also, you know, cast this and clean it up a lot more in in metal, which is a good idea. And I'll probably do that to some degree, so you know, I'll get it rough. This guy here, I'm going to curve it inwards. Um, I'm going to actually, because my bench peg has a little bit of a curve here, I'm going to put it on a bench block so that it's nice and straight. And I'm looking for support. So I'm going to hold it here. I've got it even with this edge of the bench block so that I can run my tool. And I'm just going to lift this up so you can actually see it. So what I'm doing is I'm running my tool along here like this. But I'm doing it down so that you can, um, so that I can support the piece. And you can see how... It's starting to take shape here. So once I, I'm going to do all of those, but I'm going to do this inside edge here, take a little off of there. I want to be careful when I'm doing this that I don't make too many really weak areas. I'm also thinking, how am I going to clean this up once it's metal? You know, because I'm going to have to sand all of this, right? put this back on here. I'm just going to do all these ends right now. Again, I'm holding it and supporting it and making sure that I don't break it off. Now there's still a chance that that could happen. But I'll do my best. I'd like to not repair a wax. Can make more cleanup in metal if I damage my wax at this stage. Just going to do the same thing with this guy here. Take that corner off. All the way up like that. And this side too. Again, it's even with the outside of the bench peg or bench block, sorry. If my bench peg was brand new, I could just do it on my bench peg, but it's it's got a lot of wear, so If you have any questions, just add a comment and uh, I'll try to get back to it in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm just cutting that, putting an angle on this edge here. Giving it some texture. I don't want to overwork my wax because I know, like I said a minute ago, that I'm going to have to come in and sand all of this. But at the same time, the more I can do in the, in the wax, the less I have to do in the metal. But that doesn't mean I should try to get all of it done in the wax. Because truly, there are times when things are better when you do them in the metal. 
For example, in the metal, these little thin areas are going to be much stronger, so I don't have to worry about it breaking as much. And I know I have access to this, all the parts of this piece, so I don't have to worry about um, I don't have to worry about it too much. There we go. Now, now I'm going to go in and just get some curvature on each of these. And it is much safer for me to draw my tool towards the thicker part than this way. More likely I'll ruin, I'll break this piece off if I do it the other direction. So I'm taking very little off when I do this. Now I'm trying to get that edge cleaned up and rounded. Again, I will be going in here with rubber wheels and various sanders to clean this up properly. I'm just trying to reduce the amount of work in metal. Very important when you're working in gold and platinum, less so in silver, because it's less expensive. There we go. So this one here is quite long, and it's going to be a problem either direction. And this guy too. Here we go. Remember, um, if you are interested in this finished piece, just uh, message me and uh, we can discuss what you want it made in. So I'm just going all the way around, cutting a corner here. Now I'm going to do this inside edge. Again, I'm supporting my hand on my bench peg. Oh, I just broke it there. Too much pressure. So I'm going to fix that in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to fix that right now. And to do that, I'm going to need my alcohol lamp and my methyl hydrate, which is right here, and then I have to find my wax tool. Okay. I'm going to be careful with methyl hydrate as it's a surface burner which means uh, kind of like oil, if it catches fire, catches on the surface and can be problematic. So that's just going to sit in there. While that's sitting in there, I'm just going to find a lighter. Uh, I put that in there upside down so that it can um, absorb more of the methyl hydrate. And it'll allow it to essentially function better. Here's my wax tool. I'm going to flip this over, put it down, and for ease of use, I'm actually going to put it down in my bench here so that I can have my wax. Up top there. So again, I use the wax First, I'm going to heat up my wax tool, and you should see it um, smoke a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this video. I'm just using an old wax as my, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of wax and make sure you melt 
the both sides of the repair area so I've just done the front I'm going to turn it over and also repair it from the back You don't need much wax because you're actually using some. You do have to add some wax though because otherwise you'll have a divot in your cat in your piece. And because this was right in the corner, I'm going to put a little bit on the inside here. I'd rather have wax to remove, or quite frankly, silver or gold to remove in this case, than have a hole. Or a divot so this is what I'm talking about by a divot I don't know if you can see it but there's a little low spot right there so I'm going to make sure that that is filled up there we go a little bit on the outside now this will not be quite as strong as if I didn't damage it but when it casts it won't matter the little spot on the inside so it's going to add a bit more wax there we go there we go so I'm going to still let that um, let that solidify I don't need this anymore. So now that I've done that, first thing I'm going to do once it's dry is I'm going to sand or file very carefully the back flat again. Again, I want to clean this up as best I can. So I'm going to file the front just ever so little. Take my scalpel, hold it carefully. Tighten this up. And again, because it's been broken already, I do have to be extra careful with this. There we go. So that's how to repair it. And now I can keep curving it. So there are other ways other than a graver to do this. Um, see if I can find the proper shape dentist pick over here. There's one, let's see here. So these are all hooked picks. Um, they cut on one side versus another, depending on which side you're tacking with. So because they're curved, they will give me a nice curved cut. So I'm just going all the way along the inside now, being careful with that corner that I had to repair. And these will give you a fairly uniform edging. Starting at this one, I'm going to and I am taking very little wax off at any given time get my big nose out of there for you I'm just thinning out this area now And when I say you don't want to overwork your wax, essentially, if I work this and I go too far, I do run the risk of breaking it. When really I could repair it. I mean, I could do all of this in silver. 
as well, or gold. Now, right here I can see that this curvature isn't quite what I want. frankly. There we go. And I think what I'm going to do in this case here is I'm going to keep the back flat, uh, which will give me a little bit more versatility on what I do with it. So that's pretty much done for now. This is where if I was going to do a mirror image or I wanted two of these, let's say I I'm actually thinking about making this into a hairpiece. It might be very interesting. It could be a pendant this way. Um, could be a super cool ring top. Not sure. A bit heavy. I'm thinking about doing like a stained glass in there. Um, and I'm just going to, while my, before I end today's video, uh, while I have this in place, I'm just going to show you how to cut this again. This is, side has already been flattened. I'm going to mark the other side of this wax with my dividers, which I haven't changed. And I'm just going to quickly cut it because if I do want a mirrored image set of these, say I want a left and a right earring, although in this case the piece is pretty pretty similar. I'm going to start here, support it, cut it a bit, go to the next thing. I'm supporting that little arm. Let's call them uh, axe heads because that's kind of what they are. I'm supporting those between my fingers. When I get to the next one, I'm now past this one, so I don't have to hold it, so I'm going to hold these two. Now I'm going to take it out, go to the other side, and this time I'm going to stay to the right of it. Not by much. The amount of distance for your saw blade to be over is dependent on your skill. How well do you cut straight? If you're good, you don't need to leave as much room, meaning less removal later. If you are inexperienced at using your saw frame, then it's a good idea to leave a little bit more room. Some things. Not quite lined up there. Yeah, so I'm cutting underneath each other, so we'll just take that off. I've got a quite a bit of filing to do on this side compared to the other side. And I'll just do exactly what I did before on this side, and then I would have a left and a right or a mirror image of this piece. Okay, so this is the finished piece. This is an in, in process, but I could make, you know, when this is a, a more asymmetrical piece, 
then it matters more to be able to do this. Okay, I hope this helped everybody. And remember, if you would like this piece, uh, just let me know and uh, we can discuss exactly how I'm gonna finish it. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe and share and all of those things and like and blah, 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 blah. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.